SCP-001, Dr. Mann's Proposal, Object Class, Embla. Contain Procedures. SCP-001 is contained in the grounds of Site-0 in Upstate Redacted. Fence has been constructed around the perimeter of SCP-001's observa observed effects. In addition to Site-0 security, no fewer than five armed guards are to be on present at all times to prevent unauthorized entry. The adjoining physics laboratory will be banned at all hours, studying and anomalies. Any anomalies. A small metal plaque bearing the inscription will be maintained in good condition, and any damage to be immediately reported to maintenance. Description. SCP-001 is a circular gravel path in the one area that traveled in a counterclockwise direction. The trail continuously uphill, even after reaching the origin point. When traveled in a clockwise direction, the trail shows the same amount of uphill and downhill travel as expected. Level 5 clearance is required to access SCP-001's experimentation lab. New members of Oversea Council are required to read document 001-05. Document 001-05. If you're reading this, congrats. One of us has just died. Something killed one of us. A monster, perhaps, or a rival GOC, or maybe we had just a load too carried and got too close to the flame, like Aaron. Not old age, of course. We take care of that, didn't we? Anyway, one of the old guards is gone. Maybe Jason, maybe Angie's, maybe me. I'd like be surprised if it wasn't the next one to die. I always was the most expendable. I'm going to write this to you, although. You are a human being. It is the last time anyone expects the courtesy, so I hope you appreciate it. Whoever you are, whatever you did before, you must have been a high ranking when they pulled you into this. You must have noticed the discrepancies, the inconsistencies. I don't know how much you've been told already, or how much they pieced together. The crux of the matter is this. The retrievals and recoveries of SCP objects are staged and made up whole cloth. We have never discovered an SCP in the entire history of the Foundation. I should start from the beginning. Let me tell you a story. Aaron Sigil was the physicist studying at Cornell in 1891. He was truly a gifted individual and had his life taken a different path. I believe that his name would be Edison, Einstein, and Hawking. I knew him very well. He was, and may still be, my brother. He was also an avid amateur naturalist. He enjoyed hiking through the woods. One day, while visiting our family home in the Essex County, he came across a gravel path he decided to follow for a time and noticed that it kept climbing uphill far longer than it should have. Should have taken him above the nearby mountains. The city found himself back where he started, without a foot downward to travel. Though the man would have assumed his senses were faulty and left, Aaron, however, was a stubborn man. He investigated further, found a path that did not conform to the pure geometry of Euclid, like Sa like Sarat Jerry. Before him, he had found something adherent to the nature of straight lines. He studied it. The equations he derived are the part of the file he received. He'll learn from the heart eventually. He built a small shack nearby, which served as a makeshift laboratory. His experimentations produced a key capable of opening any lock, contained as SCP-005. He brought in others. As his brother, I was one of the first he contacted. I was a medical student at Harvard at the time. I initially thought he was mad, but then he showed me the path, the key I had to learn more. There were others with us, others friends and colleagues. Most of them were gone now. But we were the core, we created the foundation from around ourselves. In the beginning, it was just a discovery about finding things we could do. We had such high hopes, such plans. We were going to change the world. We were going to save it for itself. We would feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, heal the sick, and die. Thomas Carter found us money. We were none of us poor, but we ran through our fortunes quickly. Thomas used connections on Wall Street and Washington to fund us. He showed them the least of what we could do, he promised heaven against the threat of hell. Agnes Peterson, my brother's fiancée, was an administrator. We knew nothing of how to run an organization. We were a herd of cats running to and fro. She turned us into a foundation, putting us dreams and madness to the same yoke. We soon had a f facility built. We were still so secretive. As much as we wanted to shout from the rooftops what we found, we were frightened to do. That we had taken from us. We told ourselves it was just for the interim. And so we were sure of our footing. We'd show them. Eventually we'd show them all. We were careful at first. We made small, inoffensive, even helpful items. The Fountain of Youth, the Bouncing Ball, the Civil War statue. We were more confident. We started working on humans. The concrete Man, he volunteered. Or the man with the abnormal planet. Just a drifter. We made him something special, didn't we? It was also easy. Perhaps it seemed to get absurd to get so many things in a little break in reality. But it all flowed. One discovered the next. It seemed almost like something was helping us along. But then things started to go a bit wrong. 
Well, we were playing with the equations there, and Dax only delivered the missing number. In the laboratory, I found I made a zombie plague, but we were too invested in our projects, so we pushed ahead. It came the pipe nightmare, the sterile. We knew we'd need more help. Tom showed what we'd done to the military, told them we'd found things, discovered them. We made them names like Prometheus Labs and Chaos Insurgencies. They gave us funding, personnel. We built up and expanded outwards, and repeated to sell to other countries. Some listed, some didn't. Enough did. We came to international organizations, brought to more sea searchers. Though very few suspected we were the source of these items they studied, sometimes we would arrange for an object to be found by field team. Sometimes we would simply write the reports. Sometimes uh, we generate the paperwork and we were the oversight. If we had uh, we had a thing was, it was. It still is. There were still problems, of course. Jeremy and Thomas took one of the experiments and ran off with it, creating their ridiculous club. One of our researchers grew mad and started worshipping machines, escaping through enough knowledge to be dangerous. We still deal with the fallout of those splinter groups. So we contained them. We handled them. We couldn't stop. Surely, you can see that. Rather than more cautious, we grew bolder. Cut a little boy up and turn him to the flesh that hates. There were reasons. There were always reasons. 232. 231. We created her and her sisters. Took them from orphanages and ran men arranged for what the followed. It was no accident. We knew what we were doing. There was a reason for it once, but I'll be damned if I ever remember it now. None of us do. Seth, maybe my brother. Wherever. Whatever he is now. We keep moving forward, even after Abel. After the blood pond, after the damnable reptile, we still move forward with our work. What else can we do? Our only hope is to survive the events we've set in motion, is to un better understand them, to learn more. We're at the back of the terrible beast. If we try to jump off now, we'll be crushed beneath. But that's not what frightens me. That isn't what should frighten you. We've maintained our foothold for over a hundred years. Things I really worry about are the anomalies we didn't create. No, I was telling the truth the first time. We didn't discover any of them. But some of them, they aren't our work. They just were one day. If they were in containment, they'd always been in containment. Don't you see? We're not in control anymore. We never were. 